God for all of your lives through this realms in the name of Jesus. We trust that the Lord continue to be gracious to you and he continue to keep you and let his countenance forever be favorable and shine upon you and your household in Jesus' name. We hear from the Messianic Church of God just coming to you this Sunday morning broadcasting um, from our home. Amen. And as usual, before we get into the word of morning, this morning we are planning to finish the series we are doing this morning called A Concealed Environment. This is a message with um, very Christian focus, meaning that Christian is placed into a concealed environment but it's truly um, also set forth to encourage the, un the unchurched the importance of getting into a concealed environment where you can uh, be the best version of you and harness every, all the abilities and the gifts God will give you and to use it effectively within the time in the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Before we get into the Word, we like to stand on the book of Matthew, chapter 18, verse 19, where God said, if two or three human beings on this earth can agree upon whatsoever the matter or the subject, he said he will do it. God who is all powerful, omni, amen, present, is everywhere, an omnificence, all knowing, an omnipotent, all powerful, he got, who nothing, nothing or no one can stop. He got, I will do it. He got, I like to think of this as the back doorway. He said, by you guys agreeing, coming together on a matter, on a subject, decided to work on the same thing or go about the same thing. It will activate me to do it for you or to support you to get it done. And I want to do that this morning. In such a time more than ever, we need to come together on many matters to get the Lord to intercede and to assist us. And there are four areas I would like to come together with you. Join my faith with your faith, meaning you are trusting the one who is omnipotent. And I'm going to trust the one also who is omnipotent and all-powerful, the one and only true God, to help us on this matter, binding him by the very way he has given us to get him to, act, to activate him. In the four areas is anyone who has suffered loss, you know, who have lost someone as a result of COVID. I want to pray this morning. I want to petition God that they will get the comfort they need in such a time and the support and all that is necessary to pass through this very trying and difficult situation and time. For anyone infected with the COVID, that they'll recover in the name of Jesus. For anyone who do not have the COVID, that they will continue to remain in that state. Mm -hmm. COVID will not be able to infiltrate their life or their family or community or country or nation and so forth. And for all, all of us who are in leadership position, amen, that God will grant us the grace to make the right decision at the right time. He, he will control our spirit by His Spirit so we will know to move through such a difficult time and circumstance and condition in the name of Jesus. So let's pray. Let's petition the omnipotent God right now. I'm in unity of faith with you on this matter. Father, we thank you for this morning to be in thy presence. We just want to praise you and lift you up and magnify you, remember you and glorify you. You are the one through God. You are the God who sent forth your Son because you so loved the world, Father, so that he can atone for us, so you can brought us into right standing, so you can be gracious to us, because you long to be gracious to us. And mm -hmm. we are so grateful for all you have done, mm -hmm. all you continue to do, how you watch over us, how your face shine upon us, and lead us into enlightenment. Therefore, Father, petition I want to place before you this morning morning as I always do every Sunday Father. I want to thank you for extending grace for anyone who has suffered loss as a result of COVID Father. Protect yes, them Father. right now. Comfort them Father. Give them everything they need to pass through this time and this situation in the name of Jesus. And anyone who's infected with COVID, thank you for healing them right now, Father. Thoroughly and completely heal right now in their spirit, in their soul, in their body, in all their belief, thoughts, words, and manifestation, Father, in their community, in their nation. I just thank you for the health of Jesus just tunneling and robustly moving through them and around them, Father. For anyone who do not have the COVID virus, thank you for keeping them in that state. Thank you for protecting them, never allowing the COVID virus, Father, to permeate or for infiltrate them. Can you protect them completely, spirit, soul, body, if you believe thoughts, words, and manifestation? Station. And all of us in leadership position, I'm asking you to make sure our spirit is controlled by your spirit, that we will move in alignment with your will and your timing, Father, that we will make the right decision in regards to COVID and everything that needs to be dealt with appropriately according to righteousness and justice, Father. We remember you are a God, Father, of justice and righteousness and mercy. We thank you. And we just thank you for extending your grace, as, Father, as a result of thy unfailing love. This morning we want to come with this word and our church and the body of Christ and the unchurch into thy hand. Remember thy creation, O Lord. I ask you, we just thank you for all of your grace. In the name of Jesus, we say, Amen, Amen, Amen. amen. Before we also get into the words, I told you every Sunday I'm going to practice with you 
Isaiah chapter 33, verse 2. Both the church and the unchurch. Amen, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So I ask you to, if you have your Bible, because I would like you to know so you can remember it or, or, or keep, um, you know, um, listening to the message. If you go to Isaiah 33, verse 2, they say, and I'm going to ask you to do it, uh, practice this along with me. Practice it every day, several times a day, so the Lord is grant His petition. Each of the, this, this simple prayer should be a prayer, a petition you are putting before the Lord, which He loves to hear this cry, because in Isaiah 30, 18, He wants to be gracious. So you are responding to the one who wants to be good to you by asking Him to be good to you. So let's do it together. Lord, be gracious to us. We long for you. Be our strength every morning, our salvation in time of distress. Amen? In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. If you're, if you're trying to um, find this prayer again, too, it will be on our website, amen, MCOG, or, or, um, and you'll be able to find it on the message, MCOG Expanding Light. Amen? In Jesus' name. We are planning to, as I said, to continue the series we are doing, A Concealed Environment. An environment that allows you to be the best you and to be effective amen, in every situation, every circumstance, and every condition. There are many things we are up against, challenging times, challenging situations, circumstances, and conditions. And we need to be the best version of us to deal with it. It will be nice if the situation, you know, would be tempered, you know, when you're not feeling great, it will come down, so it's not so great of a challenge, but that's not how life works. You ever see the rainfall and the just, and the unjust, I'll say it different. You will face severe challenge, whether you're prepared for it or you're unprepared for it. Whether you think it's fair or not fair, whether you're ready or not, the challenges of that day that was assigned for you to pass through that day, you still will have to pass through it. So might as well you be in a ready state. Amen. The Bible teaches, as a Christian, the kingdom of God teaches to be dressed and ready. Always be readily fitted. Paul said, I'm always ready to, provo amen, to perform a priestly and a spirit-like service. Again and again, Christ tells us we must be dressed and ready. Meaning, ready to respond, every situ to, respond to every situation, every circumstance, and all condition as they come our way. In Jesus' name. And the best place the Lord has tell us this should be done from is a concealed environment, meaning a godly environment. When man was created, he was created in Eden. The word Eden is translated as a spot within God's presence. A spot within God's presence, an area where God occupies or dwell, is where we who are made in His image are most excellent. The Hebrew word for excellent or excellence is called yatir. It is the area where we are able to excel. So if you want to excel in what you have to do, if you want to give yourself a fighting chance, I strongly suggest you be in the presence of God. Even the church, in, objectively we are in the presence of God, but we must stay there subjectively. The Gospel of John chapter 15, verse 7 and 8 says, Jesus said, apart from me, you move away from this spot, he said. Amen? He said you will not be affected. You know, in, I, I watch football sometimes. And in football, there's a process. Some quarterbacks are called um, pocket passers, meaning they like to pass the ball by getting the uh, offensive line to form a pocket around them. So a good defensive team, do they go? You have to get them off the spot. They like to stay one place where they can. They're 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 encased by their offensive line and scan the field, and then they'll take you apart. But they go make them scramble, get them out of the spot that they like to stand in, where they're able to survey and see things well. Well, the enemy is specialized. There's a, there's a counter force in this world, and he knew how the man who was created to be in Eden, how to get him, get him off, of, off the spot, how to get him out of Eden. Because once he's out of Eden, we're quite easy to be handled. Because we're no longer in a place where we are in power, where we are strengthened, where we are able to yatir, meaning excel at whatsoever we're about to encounter or deal with. So you must learn to play amen, to your own strength. Work where you, you are you, at the adva advantageous moment or position or condition works for you. And Jesus said, apart from me, you, you do not have an advantageous position, but you'll be at a disadvantage. So let's continue the word. 
Please stop last week at Ephesians 2.10 where God said, and he was speaking here to the church, he said, I have recreated, I have reformed the church into the image, into the advantageous state. Amen. And condition, this is one of the things Jesus came to atone for the church and to get humanity back into a spot within God present, into a real estate of God present where they can excel again. And God called that process born again. He said, I have recreated them, reformed them to make them effective and efficient in ways they're supposed to be to deal with life. Life is over a period of time you're going to deal with a series of people, things, situations, conditions, and forces, including God, or choose not to. This is what life is made up of. Amen? Now, whether you succeed or not is how well you maneuver through these situations, circumstance, condition, and forces, and so forth. And God said, I have recreated you to deal with it. Jesus said, I'm not praying for you to take them out of the world. I'm praying for you to protect them as they try to pass through this process called the world over a period of time. And God said, the reason I recreate them, he says, because I have pre, this is what I'm talking about. He said, I had some preordained work, some preordained thing that these that have recreated or, or was created before they get corrupt should be able to handle quite easy because I've given them dominion over these things. Meaning, I've given them mastery over these situations, circumstances, and conditions. Why you can't, why you typically can't apply your mastery is because you're not operating in a state conducive of mastery to pass through the situation. So that's when you're open the situation, you know, will be temper or, 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 or you know, or, or kind of bring down to your poor state. But God always going to know you have to be brought up. So he recreates you to excel in that situation. And beside the works in Ephesians 2.10, he said, I have preordained paths, preordained ways how to go about this. You see, when the beings I've created take on the task, they're supposed to do it, and do it in the way according to righteousness. He said, now they're living the good life. Outside of that, because they're living a life, but it's not a good life. It's not one consistent with their makeup or their purpose why human beings was created. In this recreation, we're going to pick it up this morning at 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Amen. 217, God made an, amen, an emphatical statement again. He got, the being, amen, that I recreate is no longer in a defective state. What sin is that which was created in God's image? Genesis chapter 1, verse, amen, 26 to 28. Amen. Man became infected. He became in a state where the task was still there. It still has to be done right, but he no longer was operating on an appropriate state that would allow him to excel or showcase. In Jesus' name. I want to pick it up this morning, as I said, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. And as I said, we are dealing with a concealed environment. If, you, if you're not clear on that, if you're picking up the message on the third part, you'll need to go back and, and look at the first and second. As I said, just the way a baby is born and only get intake through the placenta, amen, that which is purifying and, and, and consecrating everything before it passed to the baby through the umbilical cord. It filters everything. So in order to be at your best or to excel at what you do, you will need to be in a state where, and this one I, I, I addressed the church. You are put into a concealed environment, a, con a, a, a consecrated environment. But as the Lord said, apart from him, but you must continue to feed or nourish yourself to a sort of Jesus, I should say more important, nourish you through the percent, through the way of being in a concealed environment, amen, it's fed. There's no point putting you, this is the whole idea of backslide, amen, putting you in a concealed environment, putting you in a place where you can be strong and you have a way of contaminating your strength. And your state so that you cannot do the preordained war, uh, work or walk the preordained path. When this is happening, it's what's called your open still. Amen. But Jesus said, narrow is the way. Now I've put you in this position. There's one way to maintain and to be constantly in strength. Because I've put you in a place that you should be able to now make progress. The Bible says you must rise like an edifice. Keep rising. He said, now you're in a place you should go from strength to strength. Not weakness to strength. And you should be able to go from victory to victory and glory to glory. Providing though you continue to, amen, to feed in alignment with your recreation. Everything you should do should be in conjunction or in alignment with being in a concealed environment. In Jesus' name. 
Let's pick it up Ephesians. Um, not Ephesians, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. The Bible said this in this this this, this scripture speak in alignment with Ephesians 2:10. You are recreated. Therefore. The Bible said, therefore, if any person is engrafted in Christ, he's now moving to the concealed environment, the Messiah. He is a new creation, a new amen, creature altogether. So through and through, he has become a new creation, all the way through. It said the whole previous moral, the moral compass that was not working when he was supposed to deal with people, things, situations, and forces, can discern which way leads to strength, which way leads to righteousness, and which way leads to justice, and which way does not. This is part of his infection. Sin, as I said, corrupts your ability to be morally sound. But unfortunately, whether you're morally sound or not, you still have to deal with people, things, situations, forces, amen, and God. This is what sin does. It corrupts that your moral compass, your ability to evaluate and make good and excellent decisions that's good for your life, good for the glory of God, good for others, and good for the world, become damaged. So you make poor decisions. That's grace, God, hurt other people, and destroy the planet. But the Bible says when you are recreated in Christ, you engrafted, that previous moral and spiritual deficient position, condition, has passed away. Behold, a fresh and new has come. For the unchurch, every so often you'll go, why does these church people love to worship God? Because we have been regenerated. A fresh new way has come for us to deal with life and all of life happenings. Life is a series of happenings. And now our moral compass and our spiritual strength and our soundness, we are now in a state. And not just being in the state, we are in a concealed state that maintain it. Every day we wake up in this state allowing us to take on life at our best condition possible. It is a great travesty and a tragedy that you have to face life, but you're never at your best. Who want to face a team or a person when you're at your worst? But it's how most of us go through life. And this is what happens when you're out of a concealed environment. But we give God praise and we thank Him that He recreated us, reformat us, reformat us, removing the whole moral deficiency and spiritual deficiency. Amen. And recreate us, reformat us that we are in a state now spiritually and morally that we are sound. And can able to deal with life. Give ourselves what I call a fighting chance. Out there, the laugh is on you. There are no fighting chance. Morally, it's only a matter of time. If you didn't make the first decision wrong, because your morals are is skewed, you'll make the second or the third. It's why many people, they start out right. But sooner or later, they'll sabotage it. Because the moral compass is not sound. It's only a matter of time for the defect in it to show up. It's guaranteed it will. Something defective will show its defect only... It only needs a matter of time or space. Amen. And the lack of spiritual um, strength because of the deficiency again will show up. So God, God, that has to be fixed. The laugh is only on you. You think you can pass through this situation, this time, this circumstance, or deal with these people or condition. But the flaw that sin has activated will show shortly after. This why every so often we see someone on the rise and we go, man, this will be the next this. And then shortly after, we see what? The flaw shows up. The moral defect shows up. The lack of spiritual soundness and stability shows up. The inadequateness shows up. Sooner or later. Sooner or later. This is the whole idea of sin. It will show the flaw, amen, of that which sin is infected. Amen. The flaw in human will be exposed in certain condition or time or period. Perfect. So God said, that's the first thing. This is the whole idea to be born again, to be baptized. He just said, I have to recreate to fix the flaw. So that when the situation or the circumstance or condition press against you, amen, what comes out is soundness of morals and soundness of spiritual stability and strength and consistency. Yeah. In Jesus' name. Perfect. You know, the, the, the first line of the next verse says, but all things are from God. Mm -hmm. In the concealed environment, you can be assured that what passes through is Amen. from God. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. The, absolutely. Fresh, the fresh in you has come. In other yes. words, this is from God. Yes. This is from God. Yeah. You will know it's from God because when this situation and the circumstance challenge you, the moral soundness will show up. Yeah. And morally sound, it will not break or give way. Yeah. Amen. 
but you will continue again and again to make good decisions because the moral compass choose excellent direction. Yeah. Keep pointing, this is the way. Yeah. Is why Jesus said, I am the way. I am the reality, the truth, and I'm the life. Yeah. Again and again, you will move towards life to life because the moral compass is intact and the spirit's soundness will hold in Jesus' name. Yeah. This is the environment and the state God recreates in the church and where he wants the unchurched to be in. God knows he can't get the unchurched to make any good decision, just like when the church was part of the unchurched, because the moral deficiency will show up. So, yeah, man, they can pretend for a little while. Like Paul said in Romans 7, they might even want to keep doing things right and want to be good and want to always make the right decision. But that's not what will happen. Yep. As I said, the moral deficiency will show up. Amen. Yep. To testify that there is a deficiency in the, in the product. The product has become contaminated. Amen? In Jesus' name. Now once this being has been recreated into the image, the, the whole moral and spiritual position and condition has been passed and the new has been come and constantly being, amen, being reinforced again and again. As Pastor Chow was saying, now, let me read verse 18 of that same um, chapter to it. Said, but all things are from God who through Jesus Christ reconciled us to himself. So, amen. Everything came from God and God reconciled us, amen, to himself, amen. Receive us into favor, brought us into harmony with himself, amen. And give to us the ministry of reconciliation, that by words and deeds we might aim, amen, to bring others into harmony with him. The reason God re reconciled you and, and get your moral compass and spiritually fixed and sound is so others can have the same experience. What the church is or the administration of the church is, is that which has been reconciled, has become recreated morally and spiritually now sound and fit for life and has been set forth to help others to get exactly what they get. All God, the Bible said in John 3.16, God so loved the world. God wanted the whole world morally sound. We will not have consistent peace and able to live in harmony with each other until everybody's moral compass is working. Perfect. If the church is working and the unchurch is not working, there will be no peace. Because one is effective and one is ineffective. So God said everyone more has to become morally sound and spiritually fit, capable of responding to the daily and the momently challenges what is known as life. Amen. So this task that Jesus undertook to get humans be, and then he set the churches that could see in place to go, everybody now need to be in harmony with God, need to be operating, amen, in what it is to be made in the image of God. In essence, you need to be capable and responsible for the title that you carry of being created in the image of God. In Jesus' name. Amen. I want to look at um, Romans chapter 8, verse 5 through 9. That process is called righteousness. Amen. No, he, Hebrews 9, you said to you? Romans nine. chapter 8, verse 5 through 9. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, let's, pick up, let's pick it up actually from verse 4. The Bible reads in the book of Romans, I want to read from 4 through 9. The Bible said, so that the spirit, amen, and just requirement of the law. So the way of God make man, man is supposed to be living morally, or bottom line, in righteousness. But to do this, as I said, his moral compass, the thing that allows him when he has to deal with God, people, things, or situation, has to be functioning or working without deficiency. He can't when he's supposed to do the right thing, doing the wrong thing. But when you're morally damaged, this is exactly what happened. Things that you should do right, you do wrong. Things you shouldn't believe, you believe. And things you should believe, you're not believing. And so forth. The whole process is it's that the Bible said in, in Isaiah chapter 5, they're calling good evil and evil good. Amen? It's like a drunk person trying to make good decisions. Because they're impaired, they can't make sound decision. Yeah. They say, amen? The righteous and just requirement of the law might be full. Amen? might be fully met in us 
who live and move not in the ways of the flesh, but in the ways of the spirit. Amen. Not in the ways of deficiency, but in the ways of full efficiency. Our life governed not by the standards and according to the dictates of the flesh, but controlled by the, by the Holy Spirit. So God, human beings in essence, we are most effective and can only be effective when the, the way we are making decisions are going about life, it's being controlled by the Spirit. Meaning the governing or the most dominating force in us is the Spirit. When we're dealing with people, things, situation, or God, meaning the highest level of our decision faculty has to come from the Spirit. Anytime it's not coming from the Spirit, it's coming from a lower level of our being. I've mentioned this many times. We're an integration being as God is the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So we have a Spirit. And now be careful in the order of this. If you want to put them one to three, it's exactly the same. We have a spirit. You mean we are a spirit? We have a soul. Notice the first one. We are a spirit. We are a spirit being. We have a soul. Soul is the same like what we have for now. It is on, on phone and many things. Apps. It is this thing that gives you ability to interface and maneuver different way. Amen. And we live in the body. Just like all these apps and everything is in a phone case or in a computer case. You see? So the soul is the apps. You have a mind. The ability to perceive things, analyze things, understand things, etc. Think about things, imagine things. You know, the soul have a distinct personality, just like your thumbprint. You have emotions according to what you're thinking to give you the, the experience. You know, this is a sad experience, a happy experience. This makes me angry. So you can experience what you're going through. You know, and you have volition. Without you having a will... You can think and analyze non-stop and feel, but you can never come make decision. Will allows you, your sovereign will allow you to make decision. This is good, this is out, this cold, you know, let's go here, let's not go there, etc. So these are some of the apps in the soul. You see, so you're an integration being. But though you're an integration being, you, know, you, have a, you have a spirit, you have a soul, and you have a body. To make a moral decision, it has to come from the highest level of you. The primary level, which is the spirit. So the Bible says in order to fulfill God's just and right law, you see, you have to be making these decisions. This is when you recreate. This This is the one sin really knocked out of place. Sin, when, when, when man, or when Adam and Eve eat the apple, sin dislodged their moral faculty, their spirit, the highest standard, how they should go about life. So the apps was left to make decision how to navigate life. But the apps is governor or supposed to be governor by the spirit. When the apps are governed independently, you can guarantee moral defects will start to show. I think Winston Churchill said this. Amen. He said the mind is an excellent servant, but it's a terrible master. It must never be in a position with where it has the final say right. in what you're going to be or what you're going to do. It was never supposed to. It must be in a position where it carry out what you say. Perfect. But never in the position where it has to decide. Right. Go left, go right, go up, go down. You're asking it to do something it was not designed to do. Right. And the deficiency or the defect immediately shall show up. One of the major defects of the mind is short-sightedness. It can't see enough. Say, so I think this will work. But in life, when you just guess and make a premature decision, every decision creates a what? An effect. Right. And the effect, you see, like a boomerang always come back. And a lot of times not just on you. In your environment, the people around you, your family, on generation. You see, the mind is not designed to make decisions on its own. He doesn't have the foresight or the insight. He can't see enough. You see, and can't take enough into consideration. I bet he can try, but I imagine this is how the master was going to do it. You see? I guess, or guess, I guess this is up, but you're asking him to do something beyond his range and capacity. And then we get very upset when we don't like the result. But he was never supposed to make the decision, as Winston Churchill said.